I mean, you're you're in the in the booth right now, so it's your job to know these stats to be able to do the quick math. Bob, I don't know. What do you think? Forty games? It's, it's he's four hundred behind Clay. Oh, oh shoot! <laughs> Two seasons. It's, I'm waiting for you to say Speed Mahalouk right now. Speed Mahalouk with the long loaf, shortbread, and long loaf. Clay, you may have added to the play-by-play. Watch this. Watch this. He's in there. Shortbread. Ah, he cashed it. <laughs> What's McGruder doing over there? It's a little scuffle. I'm talking about one. Rodney McGruder. Oh no, this dude might be out the league soon. He's probably mad about that. Who knows? Wow. Shots. <laughs> he's over here checking my guy. Uh, you good? Five he's over here trying to start something uh, uh, like he's a good player or something. It's like, bro, easy. get out of here. You might be. Sorry. All right, we're done. Easy. <laughs> we're done. Amazing. Welcome back to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols, still hanging out with Kendrick Perkins, Zach Lowe. I, I, first of all, I would just like to point out when we saw Clay interviewing Steph there, see, it's not so easy to do that job, Clay, okay? He was looking down at his notes. He didn't have the right numbers. I'm just saying. I will say, however, he completely redeemed himself with the colorful way that he described Rodney Magruder on that Warriors broadcast. That is keeping it real for the fans. And unfortunately for Magruder, Draymond Green also had quite a bit to say about Magruder after the game. Let's roll that as well. Apparently he was um, taken up for Wayne Ellington. When the f Rodney Magruder become the tough guy of the team? Like, I don't know, man. Everybody in the league tough these days. It's crazy. I've seen a lot of tough guys this year. I don't understand it. And, and and don't nobody do anything. Also, I think it was something that like that Juan said in the first or second quarter to Wayne Ellington. You ain't got nothing better to do that you still thinking about something from the first or second quarter when you weren't in the game. So apparently, um Wayne Ellington must have went over to the bench. I guess he went and told um Rodney McGruder. <laughs> Because he hadn't been in the game. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's too many tough guys in this league these days for me. But I know ain't nobody scared of no damn Rodney McGruder. I, I, I don't even know what to do with all of this. I saw someone on Twitter afterwards said that that should just be Draymond's Hall of Fame speech and we're done. Um, Zach, <laughs> whose comments stung more, Clay or Draymond's? Well, look... Uh, this is if, if this is the price of getting unfiltered Clay Thompson, I'm willing to throw my Rodney Magruder under the bus to get unfiltered Clay Thompson. I'm sorry. But I will say this felt a little bit like bullying to me. Like Rodney Magruder is just trying to fight and scrap for his NBA career. And Draymond and Clay are Hall of Famers, multi-time All-Stars. He let Rodney Magruder be. We don't need to go off for five minutes about. Did you see the Warriors broadcast put down? five minutes per game and four <laughs> games this season. There, Even the Warriors broadcast got into bullying Rodney Magruder. Poor guy. My God. Mm. Well, <clears throat> well, I'm going to say this. I, I don't applaud it and I don't like it. To me, Rachel and Zach, I, I thought this was very corny. When you look at a guy like Rodney Magruder, who was undrafted in 2013, who's been fighting his way, went down to the G League, and is still on the roster here today in the year 2021. A guy that has to fight every single offseason, go into training camp and prove himself. And we all know how hard it is just to get to the NBA. It's even harder to stay in the NBA. And they have a 15 or 14 guy on every roster that fights for their position and be that guy on the bench. All he was doing was standing up for his teammates. And I love Clay, but he didn't. I, I can't roll with him on this statement that just wasn't right. And far as Draymond talking about a lot of tough guys in the league, I love Draymond, but he talked just as much as anybody. And nobody really is doing nothing outside of talking because Draymond is not doing anything to nobody when he sees somebody outside in the offseason, outside the court when the season is over. Because I can recall the incident where Tristan Thompson had addressed him and he copped the plea. So at the end of the day, look, I don't agree with Clay's uh, statement. I know it was good. It was funny at the time. But a guy like Rodney Magruder, Magruder who's, who's actually – fighting for his job night in, I mean, year after year after year, and they're still surviving in the league. They have a lot of guys that are on rosters like that, and I just can't roll with that state. Well, I respect all of that, and I do think that's important, but also this is an issue that Rodney Magruder came over 
He went toward the Warriors tunnel. In fact, there were reports afterward that the league was going to look into that because it violates some of the protocols that they have set up. And we have a league where people are constantly saying, oh, I wish it had the toughness. I wish we had the toughness of the old days and the 90s and the NBA. I'm not sure that anything that was said on the broadcast or in the post-game press conference rises to the level of sort of the back and forths and, and the beefs and, and the stuff that we saw in the old school NBA. So I don't know. Sticks and stones on the words to me. And and I mean, now we gotta, we're going to watch the next Warriors-Pistons game whenever that happens, I guess, next season. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have something to talk about. Uh, here's what the jump recommends for today. ESPN.com's latest power rankings are out, guys. There's a new number one, the L.A. Clippers. We'll talk about them next. Welcome back to The Jump. Let's head out west where the Nuggets snapped the Jazz's NBA best 11-game win streak last night in Denver. Nikola Jokic matching his career-high 47 points. He also had 12 boards, two steals, one block. Oh, by the way, he went four for four from behind the arc. So, Big Perk back with us. Did the Joker's performance Sunday change the MVP race at all? Absolutely. Look, he jumps ahead of LeBron James. I think it's him and Joel and B MVP to be one right now. Look, I am just so happy that the big men are starting to dominate the league again because for a minute they were <laughs> going away, Rachel. And so when you look at what Joker is doing, this is a guy that is not athletic. This is a guy that don't run fast, don't move quick, but plays the pace of his game and gets the job done. And in my opinion, He's arguably one of the greatest big skill bigs to ever play the game. Greg Popovich said he's the modern day Larry Bird. And guess what? He told no lies. Mm. It's a little exhausting to do the MVP update day after day after day. <laughs> but even forget last game. Nikola Jokic right now is the MVP of this season. And yeah, last night did matter. They blew out basically a team that was on an 11 game winning streak that looked unbeatable. And what was amazing about that game, if you watched it, it looked so easy. I mean, mm. he just put up the most effortless 35 point half I think he, I've ever seen. Raining jump shots, little hook shots. Rudy Gobert is on me. Okay, fake, fake, fake. Hook shot goes in. It was so easy for him to dominate a team that had been on fire. And he's been, I mean, I think he's the best passing big man in the history of the league, period. And I think he is the MVP right now. But this is going to be one of those seasons, I hope, like 2017 when Russ won, mm -hmm. when we have like a nice three, four man, five man MVP race. I think it's going to get frothy. <laughs> well, well, but go ahead, Perk. Hold on, Zach, but don't don't you just discount Joel and B right now because he has the Philadelphia 76ers no, he's in it. at an elite he's in level. It. And, and by the way, just a couple of weeks ago, he put up a 40-plus point night too now, so Jokic is just behind him right now and doing it at a later time. But we're not going to just say that Jokic is the clear cut, Zach Lowe, all right? We're not going to start that today. It's going to be a great race, Perk. It's going to be a great race with lots of ups and downs. But right now, if you ask me to vote, if I had to fill out my ballot now, I'm putting Jokic one. That's all I'm saying. Guess, yeah, because guess what? We don't want you to vote because you voted for Giannis last year when Rachel and I was trying to tell you. No, no, no. I voted for Giannis as well. I voted for Giannis as well. 